Enjoy our podcast? Go to surfingthetsunami.com to discover an amazing wisdom and wellness platform designed to take ancient ideas down to street level with practical tools and takeaways delivered by some of the world's greatest thinkers, authors, and innovators. Sync up with a growing community of like-minded people from around the world on a journey to self-awareness, mindfulness, and fulfilling their dreams. The Wisdom Feed Plus membership is a perfect place to take your next steps on your personalized success path to a happier and healthier life. You can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. Go to surfingthetsunami.com today. Your inner critic is ironically trying to keep you safe from harm because the purpose of our amygdala is survival and self-preservation. So creating that sense of self-compassion, feeling, you know, a sense, giving yourself a lot of grace when you're starting off on the stress journey is the way to go because it's the quickest way to really build that neuroplasticity and rewire your brain and body for less stress and more resilience. Welcome back to the Street Smart Wisdom Podcast. I am Steve Stein, the founder of Better Listen and Wisdom Feed Plus. For four decades, my mission has been to find and publish the most inspirational and evidence-based thinkers in the world. We've sold more than one million downloads of wellness audiobooks over the years, so you can rest assured, if it is on the Street Smart Wisdom Podcast or Wisdom Feed Plus, It is legit and carefully vetted. Welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Stein, and I'm the host of the Street Smart Wisdom podcast. And we're excited today to have a new friend of Wisdom Feed and the podcast, uh, Dr. Aditi Nurkar, and we are going to be discussing her upcoming book called The Five Resets, Rewire Your Brain and Body for Less Stress and More Resilience. Welcome, Dr. Nurkar. Pleasure to have you here. Steve, it is such an honor and pleasure to join you, as I've mentioned to you offline John Kabat-Zinn is one of my, I consider him my meditation mentor, and I write about him in the five resets multiple times. So to be with you and talk about this topic that's very near and dear to my heart, it is an absolute pleasure and honor. Thanks for having me. That's great. Yeah, we do a lot of work with uh, John Kabat-Zinn and discovered, do people call you Dr. Aditi or Dr. Dr. Narukar? Dr. Nurkar. So uh, I came across your podcast, actually, and it was just excellent. Uh, So I figured I would uh, reach out to you. And as happenstance would have it, you have a new book coming out. And, uh, and John Kabat-Zinn is, uh, I think you said in the initial email that he helped kind of get you in the direction of mindfulness, or he was integral. So let's, so tell us a little bit who who you are, and then you know we can talk about John or you know how you got started on, on your path and how you got started on the book. Even that sounds great. So if you look behind me, Steve, you'll see full catastrophe living, mindfulness for beginners. There's a lot of books on my bookshelf that are um, JKZ. I really do credit John as someone who helped me and was a real source of light during a time of darkness for me. I write about it in the five resets and how when I was a medical resident in training, working 80 hours a week, I was stressed like everyone else in medical training and was seeing death and dying on a daily basis. I was working as a senior resident in the cardiac ICU. I was taking care of all of my patients' hearts, but not really paying attention to my own heart and my own self-care and my needs. And I went through a period of acutely debilitating stress. I had palpitations and I was, you know, never at work, but it was always at night as I went to sleep, I would have palpitations. And 
I saw lots of doctors for them. I had the full million dollar workup, was told, oh, everything is fine. Be reassured. It's all good. It's just stress and try to relax. So I did whatever I could to relax what I knew of, which is hang out with friends, watch movies, go shopping, go to a spa, you know, the things that you think are what are going to work to alleviate your stress. And all of those have merit and there's lots of value there, but it never really helped in the long term. And because I was a medical doctor, I had access to lots of good research papers and I started reading everything I could. I put on my scientist hat to figure out, you know, what's happening to me? Why am I feeling this way? And of course, John's work, his early work um, helped me uh, learn more about what mindfulness is. And I found my way out of the dark tunnel of stress. With John's help, I often say that he is my meditation mentor. I have done MBSR multiple times. I, I was in teacher training for MBSR, went to a retreat. Um, I am an active practitioner of meditation myself. I have taught meditation to patients. Um, it is one of the things I talk about in my book, The Five Resets. And really, my journey to becoming a doctor who focuses on stress, resilience, mental health, and burnout is because I was first a patient and a, you know, a medical trainee and a patient who suffered from burnout and stress and needed a way out. And so I essentially became the doctor that I wish I had at a time when I was the stressed patient. And along the way, met some incredible teachers, John and Saki being two and many others. And um, now then after my I finished training, I moved for my final part of training for a medical fellowship at Harvard to learn about the things that I had read about when I was a internal medicine resident. So I read about things like the mind-body connection and fMRI studies on meditation and things that were very fascinating to me. And I was practicing meditation and yoga on a regular basis, doing all the other things that I talk about in the five resets, which we'll cover in a second. And I moved to Boston to study uh, with it at Harvard Medical School, a fellowship studying integrative medicine and specifically mind-body therapies, mind-body medicine, and how to bring those sorts of things into conventional medical care. And then after my fellowship at Harvard, I stayed on at Harvard. I was first the assistant medical director and then the medical director of an integrative, med of an integrative medicine clinic at Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital where I saw patients and um, had a stress management clinic. That was what I did. I offered stress management to patients because we know based on prior data that 60 to 80% of all primary care visits have a stress-related component to them. That's not to say stress causes the issues, it's, but it certainly exacerbates and worsens the problems. And it's often a diagnosis of exclusion. We say, okay, you have stress. Like everyone, you know, like when I went to see doctors, what they told me, yeah, it's, don't worry about it. It's stress. Nothing else is wrong. It's stress and just try to relax. And in my research, when I was a fellow, I realized and discovered that if 60 to 80% of visits have a stress-related component, yet only 3% of all primary care visits, is there a stress reduction counseling aspect? So while stress is pervasive in conventional medical care, counseling about stress is really, really low, only 3% of patient visits. And that was a big gap. And so I wanted to close that gap. And that is why I started a practice in Boston, specifically focused on stress management counseling. And I did a lot of deep work and studying and developed a proprietary method. And since that time, that was uh, over, you know, like many, many years ago. And since that time, I've since evolved my career. I teach at the medical school. I am a speaker on all of these topics and now an author writing about this experience for myself, my personal journey, patient stories, have patients who have benefited from stress reduction. And I want the reader who reads the five resets to feel like I am talking to them because I have seen thousands and thousands of people be transformed away from stress to resilience. And there is a scientific way to do that. And that is what I hope to offer in this book. I also want to say that everything I talk about is free. So I really do focus on access and resources and 
everything I recommend has zero cost and also is easy and time sensitive. So this is not something that's going to take you an hour. People who are stressed are often overworked. They have lots of things and competing interests in their lives, their parents, their workers, their, you know, um, and not, we don't all have like an hour or two to give to ourselves every day to focus on our stress and self-care. So things have to be easy. They have to be quick, but most importantly, they have to be effective, practical, and actionable. I love all that. And a uh, couple number, everything you, you're saying is resonating. So, so excited to have you uh, here to meet you and to talk with you. So I think you said you're involved in the integrative medicine uh, part uh, uh, program. And so one of the themes, just like uh, there's not, a, I mean, I don't, I see a theme, uh, a parallel is that uh, there's not a lot of teaching about nutrition to MDs, you know, and there's not a lot of or any teaching about stress reduction. Oh, relax, have a glass of wine, go for a run or whatever. So, um, and, and Wisdom Feed, uh, our kind of parent organization, our theme uh, tagline is taking ancient ideas down to street level. So, you know, so what can you do that's timeless wisdom, but how do you make it practical, like I say for my friends that I grew up with in Brooklyn? You know, they're going to roll their eyes if you start using the word chakra. Or, and, for, <laughs> and for people who go uh, to Esalen or to Omega Institute or to, uh, or to a yoga retreat, Everyone needs stress reduction, but I love that it's free and simple and you don't have to be in the Himalayas, the, you right. know, to, to make it accessible to, uh, to, your, to your everyday life. That's right. It's about, you know, it's not taking a surfer vacation to Bali. It's not going up into the mountains for a retreat. It's not even going to a spa. You can access that idea of minimizing your stress using the biology of stress and your brain and body. And you can do that in the middle of your messy, overscheduled, complicated life, a little bit every day and trust the process and know that your brain and body will respond accordingly because ultimately there's this concept of neuroplasticity, which is a very long scientific word, but simply means that your brain responds to things that happen to it. It is not a fixed thing. Your brain and your body are always responding to what's happening all around you. They respond to each other. That's the mind-body connection. It's that your mind and your, bo and your body are always talking to each other. And they are inextricably linked and in constant communication. And what's good for your body is often good for your mind. What's good for your mind is often good for your body. And then because we know that exists, um, we there's a lot of scientific data to support that. In addition, we also know that our brains are always evolving based on what we give them. And so with neuroplasticity, you know, you may say like, I'm stressed. I just have a stressed brain. That's just, there's nothing else I can do about it. I have a stressed brain. I would say that I have always loved my reluctant patients. There are some of my most favorite patients, because inevitably when their stress does improve, because through the science of and biology of, st of stress management, you know, when you do certain things, the 15 strategies I offer in the five resets, so the five resets is set up to be a journey towards less stress. And then you go through the book and very bite-sized, actionable, easy things for a stress brain to incorporate into their life. And then you see the result. And often people who are skeptics or really reluctant are often the ones who are the most surprised and joyful at the end when they do have less stress for good, you know, because we're actually changing the brain. We know that meditation changes the brain. We know that meditation impacts the prefrontal cortex. That's another fancy word, but it's simply the area of your brain right behind your forehead. And um, it changes that part of the brain. So it helps with things like what we call executive functions, memory, planning, organization. Meditation changes that, but so do other things. And 
in the five resets, we talk about a lot of the things that can actually change your brain for less stress. That that I love this. So what's another word for neuroplasticity? You know, the reason neuroplasticity is so fascinating is because we used to think that our brains that we had at birth were our brains that we had for life. Like it was a grab bag. You got a good brain, you were set. You didn't get a good brain, too bad. But the brain is simply a muscle, just like your biceps. And so, you know, with your biceps, if you want to make your biceps stronger, what do you do? You pump iron. In this case, with neuroplasticity, if you want to build a better, stronger, less stressed, more resilient brain, you're not pumping iron, you're pumping neuron. That's like my nerdy medical joke because it's a neuron is a brain you're cell. Pumping neurons. So, Pumping, you're not pumping iron, you're pumping neuron. And so neuroplasticity, an easy word for that is that your brain is a muscle. And when you think about your brain as a muscle, rather than something fixed, unchangeable, like just it's there and it's never going to change. Instead, when you think about muscles, it's really easy for you to understand that, of course, muscles change. If you don't do much to muscles, they can atrophy and weaken and become deconditioned. Likewise, if you train your muscles and it doesn't have to be, you know, doing 300 pound uh, deadlifts, but even just like walking every day can train your muscles, right? So lifting a few pounds of weight, we all understand that it's in pop culture that our muscles change and respond to things happening and the way we treat our muscles, our re muscles respond appropriately. And same thing with our brain. Our brain is no different. There are certain things that we can do, and it's all in the doing. When you do better, you feel better because ultimately it, your brain is a muscle. Wow. Yeah, John Kevinson talks about, you know, putting in the reps, you know. Yes. And that's, the, and that's so that changes the neural pathways. If, and when I say reps in this context, um, it's wellness things, uh, doing wellness, uh, you know, self-care, but it's meditating. You know, that's the basic thing. The more you meditate, I guess, then the easier it is to drop into a relaxed state. So, so the reason neuroplasticity really works, and let's use an example, say, of walking. And initially, you might say, I don't want to exercise. I use this example a lot because people often know what's good. We all know what's good for us, right? Like we should exercise more. We should try to sleep more, drink more water, eat better, get off our phones and not be you know, on social media as much. Like we know all of these things that are good for us. And yet so few of us do them on a regular basis. So that gap between knowledge and information and action is really wide. And my belief is that my role as an author, as a doctor, as a public speaker, it's to close that gap. People know the, they have the information, they have the knowledge, but how do you get someone and how do you help them cross that bridge to action? How do you bring these things into your daily life when you are stressed, when you are overworked, when you are overscheduled? How do you do it? And so because I've worked with tens of thousands of people, patients, I'm able to really understand the psychology of behavior change, the psychology of habit formation. And a lot of what I talk about, that I write about and talk about is based on these principles of meeting people where they are and helping people make actionable changes in their lives, which lead to meaningful results. So for example, let's take walking, which we know has so many health benefits, including stress reduction but it is so difficult to walk every day or even build it in. I use the example of like, so for example, when you're thinking about neuroplasticity, right? You could say, I'm going to go to go for a walk once a week, but chances are you might tell yourself, I'll go for a one hour walk once a week, but it's, you know, things happen, things come up. It's really difficult to go for a walk. Then you, then you're, you have a meeting runs over and then you have another meeting and you say, you know what, I'm not going today. Maybe I'll go tomorrow. Then your kid has to have some after school activities. So you say, okay, I can't make it today. All good intentions, but you're just not able to walk. Instead, think about doing something every single day because our brains respond when we're doing something new. Doing something every day is easier than doing something once in a while because we avoid decision fatigue. So aim for a 10, 20, even a five minute walk every single day. 
And what you're doing when you commit to that very low bar of five minutes outside every day is that you're training your brain. You are making neuroplasticity work for you. So instead of, you know, you can think of it as like a one lane dirt road. That's what your habit for walking starts off as. But then when you do it every day for five minutes and you build it into your life and you create a habit, it takes about eight weeks to create a habit, by the way, your brain starts making that habit or that neural pathway, that network of walking. It goes from a dirt road to a one lane paved road, like a local you know, route. Then over time, it becomes two lanes. And by eight weeks, it's like a four lane highway. Didn't happen overnight, but you have just continued to strengthen that connection by the doing. So it's all in the doing. And when you start a new habit, start really small, five minutes, but try to do it every single day and go slow, start low. And with time, you can then, once you've built the habit and you have a four lane highway in your brain when it comes to that habit, then you can say, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym two times a week or three times a week and do an hour long session because you've trained your brain, but your brain, like anything, like it's a muscle, it needs time, it needs training and it needs practice more than anything. I will also say a really important part of meditation, because I've had a meditation and mindfulness practice for several decades now, it's really a sense of self-compassion, right? So I think one of the key tenets that I talk about over and over again in the five resets is when you are feeling stressed, our inner critic is alive and well and just screaming at the top of its exactly. lungs. And we, yeah. you know, because again, we can talk about what happens to the brain. It's not your fault. And um, you're not alone if you're feeling this way, because it is just the amygdala part of your brain that is overactive during stress. It's your biology of stress. So your inner critic is ironically trying to keep you safe from harm because the purpose of our amygdala is survival and self-preservation. So creating that sense of self-compassion, feeling you know, a sense, giving yourself a lot of grace when you're starting off on the stress journey is the way to go because it's the quickest way to really build that neuroplasticity and rewire your brain and body for less stress and more resilience. Excellent. Can we do uh, uh, a little run through of what the five resets are? Sure. So the five resets are five bite sized mindset shifts. And they have come about because I have spoken to hundreds of thousands of people at this point. And what I noticed is when I was seeing patients in a clinic, I would talk to people one-on-one -on -one and they would have these, um, you know, these, these experiences with their stress. But what I noticed is when I would talk to large audiences of like 20,000 people or, you know, 50,000 people, everyone had the same concerns. And it was shocking to me because of course, in a waiting room of like 30 or 40 people, when you keep hearing the same story again and again and again, it's not the same stress struggle, of course, everyone's, you know, is unique to their own, but you start noticing certain patterns and pattern recognition is a lot of what a doctor does. Diagnosis is about pattern recognition. And stress is often considered this elusive thing that we can't really pin down. And because I focused on it in a clinical perspective, and then later in talks, I see that there are some real clear patterns. And so the five resets are five key ways that you can shift your mind and body away from that sense of stress and more towards resilience and thriving. So you're moving from fight or flight mode and surviving to thriving. And so the first reset is to get clear on what matters most. I offer many, many strategies in that reset to help you figure out what matters most to you. It's not what's the matter with me, but rather what matters most to me. And that is really the crux of the first reset. Like I said before, Steve, there is a big gap between knowledge and action. And that first reset helps you close that gap for yourself. It's a blueprint for what's ahead. The second reset is get quiet in a noisy world. This reset is all about finding a moment, even if it is five minutes a day of quiet. And I talk a lot about sleep and social media because the greatest distractor for our time, our bandwidth, and our attention is this little device in the palm of my hand. 
We have it everywhere with us at all times. Moments when we could be pondering just life or daydreaming, which is actually very therapeutic for our brains, like waiting in the line at the grocery store, waiting at the bank, you know, you're just waiting to pick up your kid from school. Everyone is on their phones, heads down on their phones, consuming, consuming. First thing in the morning, before your second eye is even open, you crack that first eye in the morning, you look at your phone. Right before you're going to bed, you look at your phone. Wait, so wait, wait, before your second eye is open, like you're not, right, it's a, not it's even open, right? That's right. You, you open That's up. That's unconscious. That's like an addiction. It's, you don't even know. It's But it's like those same neural pathways yes. for good things. You know, it's a neural pathway with a negative. If you can easily just yeah, it's not your an phone addiction. and two hours say, later. Yeah, it's not an addiction per se, because there is something called internet addiction. And most people don't have that. What it is, is a pattern. It's a default. Okay. Right. And how do we get out of that default? It's not your fault if you have that default. It's like what happens to all of us. You know, it's big tech. They know exactly what they're doing. So it's there are many things that we can do to break the cycle and be intentional about our media use, for example. And so the second reset is really about figuring out how to find your quiet in this noisy world. The third reset is sync your brain to your body. Many strategies there on tapping into your mind-body connection and becoming familiar with your mind-body connection, particularly if you've never heard of the term mind-body connection before. Even if in your audience, for example, many people are lifetime or very long-term meditators, there is still so much information in this reset because it helps you tap into your mind-body connection, not just on the cushion, but off the mat, off the cushion, out in the world, you know, in a busy workplace, for example. How do you tap into your mind-body connection there? So there's lots of practical and actionable strategies in that reset. The fourth reset is come up for air. And this is probably the one that resonates most with your audience because it is talking about various breathing techniques and the fight or flight response compared, which is the sympathetic nervous system compared to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest response. And really talking about the breath as the gateway and how our breath is the only bodily function that is under voluntary control and involuntary control and how modulating our breath and being attentive and paying attention, maybe for the first time, it doesn't have to be a deep meditation or mindfulness practice, but even just awareness is the first step and learning some really key breathing techniques that could help. And then the final reset is bring yourself forward, bring your best self forward. This is really a culmination of all of the resets. The way I've laid out this book is to help stressed people get better as quickly as they can. And every section of the book is short, concise, and easy and practical to bring into your life. And it is a journey. So you start off with the roadmap and you do all of your exercises to figure out your destination. And you start at the, you know, start at the start and you look at your destination. And then through each reset, it take you through the way I would with a patient to that final destination of bring your best self forward. And that is really a culmination of all of the resets and principles, but more so it's about how can you bring this into your life for good? So now that you've made all of this progress, how can you bring it into your life for good? How can you continue to rewire your brain and body for the long term? And to really, like I said earlier, Bring your sense of self-compassion. We are so, it is so easy for us to celebrate the big wins, but the fifth reset is also about really celebrating and honoring the small wins too, you know, celebrate every single win because if you are worthy, you are worthwhile, and you are not just a work in progress, but you are also a masterpiece. I like it. Wow. That, that. That's, uh, I love how you make it kind of bite size and it's not uh, some esoteric uh, something out there. It's like everything sounded very accessible, very tangible. And uh, that, that's what we constantly look at. I've been, I've been doing these recordings for a long time. And uh, the first audio book I published 
was uh, I edited uh, on reel-to-reel tape with a razor blade. Oh, wow. And I recorded uh, Linus Pauling and uh, Joseph Campbell and the Dalai Lama and John Kabat-Zinn and all, all these people. And there's there's themes that when something like what you so-called pattern recognition with diagnosing, you know, you start to see whether it's a nutritionist, whether it's a mind body person, you know, it comes down to habits. It comes down to, and me have doing this for years. It's like, well, how can you make it practical? Like I introduced my friend to, we've had Dean Ornish on a podcast a few times and you know, he had a, a terrible open heart surgery and uh, he's a friend for, actually from Brooklyn. And I wait till he got better. I reached out to him and I said, have you ever heard of Dean Ornish? And no, I said, oh, and so I sent him a link to my podcast. Then a month later, I get a call back from him. Steve, did you tell me about Dean Ornish? And he was like, he went to his program in UCLA uh, and he always was steaks and meat and potatoes. He was always in good shape, but he didn't know he had a whole heart thing going on. Anyway, flash forward 18 months. Uh, now he's a vegan and he meditates three, four times a day. And uh, so, and when, you know, it makes it real. And I love that it's, you don't have to, you don't need uh, to decipher these five resets. It's like, clear very accessible i think that was really important to me so the sort of like tenets of my work is that everything i recommend has to be free it has to be science backed because these are you know human brains and bodies we're we're dealing with there has to be a lot of good science and i'm a scientist so i'm data driven and i think many people are data driven which i appreciate so something that is free, not even just low cost, but no cost, because resources are tight for many, many people. And I want to make sure that stress management is accessible and available to anyone who wants it. And then, um, you know, time, also a big, big factor, making sure these strategies that I'm recommending are not just scientific, free and effective, but also time effective, that you aren't spending an hour a day it, you know, uh, is there, doing these things. So, evidence-based, all that good stuff. Is there s- some kind of micro practice for someone listening now? You or some you could walk us through for a couple of minutes, or sure. I think that one of the things that you could try immediately, starting today, is to go for a walk. And as you're walking, focus on your feet on the floor outside rather, ideally, if you can get outside, hopefully you live in a safe area, make sure it's well lit, you know, all of those things that I have to say as a mom, um, and don't go out after dark. (laughs) And, um, you know, take a five minute walk, if you want to tap into your mind body connection, see how it feels, walk, let your feet articulate on the on the ground as you walk, notice your breathing, notice your posture, what you will see is that your feet have over 300 muscles, bones, joints, ligaments, and tendons in them. So you really do have a lot of power. Um, I'm sorry, I misspoke. uh, I believe it's 30 bones and 100 muscles in your feet. So you just have a lot of power in your feet and really grounding yourself and walking. Think of it as a movement meditation. If you are someone who already meditates, as I suspect many of your listeners are, How do you incorporate, you know, often we have, there's lots of people who meditate, but aren't always interested in like a daily movement practice because for lots of reasons, and it's just really hard to bring exercise into your life. And, you know, even though we all know it's good for us, it's really difficult to bring it in. So if you are a meditator, like many of the people listening today are, bring some movement meditation into your life in addition to sitting in a meditative posture. So go for a walk, spend five minutes. That is a wonderful, quick reset, which over time will rewire your brain and body for less stress. And in time, if you do a little bit every day, so start off at five minutes, work up to 10. And if you can get to 20, that's great. You know, I share a story in my book about me being a stressed patient 
and not knowing what to do. So I just walked around the block once and I was like, oh, I feel kind of better. Next day after a 30 hour shift, I did it again. I walked around the block once and then I said, oh, I feel better. I think I'm going to go again. And then I walked around the block two, three times. And then a couple of days passed. And then it was like, you know, I did one or two 30 hour shifts because, you know, we work a lot. I was right. working 80 hours a week in medical training. And so I started to build a daily walk into my, you know, to and from. And to this day, Steve, I walk every single day. And I, pra- I talk, the- I walk the talk, you know, I practice everything I'm recommending in the five resets myself. It is a lot of why I really do feel like I haven't had, I've had lots of stress in my life since that medical trainee experience, but um, I have always been able to really focus on self-care and in the midst of a very busy, you know, setting up a medical clinic and writing a book and all of the things that we do to stay engaged, you know, we all have different things that we do all worthwhile ways that we contribute to the world, whatever that may mean to you, but you are no, you are only as good for others until you, you know, you have to take care of yourself first. So only when you show up for yourself first, can you then show up for others? And so with that ethos in mind, I do practice everything I write about. It's what I believe has really helped me equilibrate my mind and my body and has really helped me stay grounded during turbulent times, particularly now, you know, it's, we mentioned, you and I talked about this at the start of our conversation, how there is so much tumult in the world and it never seems to end. You know, we went through the pandemic and then that was so tumultuous and that, you know, we all face collective trauma and some more than others. Then we, you know, entered like a period of racial reckoning during that time time in the US at least. And there was the Russia-Ukraine war, also a huge stressor. Now we're having an Israel-Hamas conflict. I mean, there is just one thing after the other, and it is the perfect storm. Our brains and our bodies are not designed to sustain this level of grief and trauma and suffering. So If you are feeling, you know, low or stressed or anxious or depressed or grieving or a combination of any of those, it is so important to give yourself grace and compassion to know that you are not alone and that it is not your fault. I think if there's anything to take away from this conversation, it's that it's like, don't blame yourself. You are simply a human being living through really chaotic and turbulent times and It's the perfect storm. And I want the five resets. I hope that the strategies in the five resets and the five mindset shifts of the resets themselves can serve as a raincoat to keep you warm, safe, and dry to weather the storm. That's phenomenal because that's totally along the lines of what we're doing at Better Listen, our audio company and Wisdom Feed. And uh, it's practical. And so just to kind of wrap that part up. So you're talking about taking a walk every day, but make it mindful. Like, you know, don't have your phone. Don't be, you know, one of those things on YouTube where you walk into a fountain while you're on your phone. (laughs) Put your phone down, feel the feet, feel the floor under your feet. And even if it's just five minutes and on a regular basis, it it, it makes that that kind of a difference. This has been great. So how can people find, find you, find out more about you? So to pre-order the book, which is, you know, as you know, Steve, it, it can be a game changer for books if they are pre-ordered. It tells the publisher and people out there and tells the world that the book and stress and burnout are valuable topics. And so they print more, t- more copies for people to read that book. This book can be found on fiveresets.com. I am on social media at Dr. Aditi Narukar. And I also have a website, which is dradidi.com. So fiveresets.com and social media are where you will find me. And if you need to order the book, it's fiveresets.com. Five, five number five. Fiveresets.com. I love it. What a timely book, uh, a timely message for uh, a world out of balance. And what a pleasure uh, spending some time with you today. Uh, Dr. Nurekar, that it's been a pleasure. I'm so glad our paths crossed, and I'm very excited to, uh, you know, to be able to release this uh, when the book comes out. So thank you. It's such so a much. pleasure talking to you, and I am a consumer of your products as much as I am today an expert. But I have been listening to you and your work for a long, long time. So it's a pleasure to be here.
Huh, it, it's exciting that now you're on the other end. You be, right. The student has become the master. So, <laughs> all right. Welcome and thanks again. Thanks so much. Thank you. If you like the Street Smart Wisdom podcast, we invite you to become a Wisdom Feed Plus member. You'll have direct and on-demand access to some of the most compelling and relevant thinkers in the world. And it's all highly curated and designed to help you be your best you. Change your mind, change your life. If you're like the rest of us in this insane world filled with stress and uncertainty, Wisdom Feed Plus can help you smile more and stress less. That's exactly why our team has created Wisdom Feed Plus, a wonderful community of inspired individuals in search of health, wellness, and a life of abundance. When you become a member, you don't just get access to a broad array of meditations, yoga, qigong, and live events. You become part of an inner movement and a growing community of like-minded people along the Wisdom Feed Plus success path. Your personalized journey to a peaceful and satisfied life. Go to surfingthesunami.com to get started.